welcome dear students today we shall begin with a new chapter that is current electricity and magnetism chapter number 4 part 1 before we begin the lesson let's have a quick revision which constituents are present in an atom think students an atom consists of protons neutrons and electrons here in this picture we can see that the atom is filled with electron proton and neutron one more thing we notice notice from this picture is that an atom has same number of positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons so an object doesn't show any charge though its atoms contains charged particles therefore we can say that plenty of electrical charge is filled in the objects around us see on the screen we can see so many objects which are present around us they all are made up of atoms which means these all objects consist charge what will happen if a glass rod is rubbed on a silk cloth when a glass rod is rubbed against a silk cloth it get, it gets electrically charged how do objects get charged think students an electrical charge is created when electrons are transferred to or removed from an object because electrons have a negative charge when they are added to an object it becomes negatively charged when electrons are removed from an object it becomes positively charged what are static and moving charges when all the atoms of an object acquire the electric charge the object as a whole becomes electrically charged when the charge does not move the object is said to have acquired static charge if the charge moves then it is said to that said that the object has moving charge in short we can say static charge which means they do not move they are steady or stationary which means in one place moving charges gets transferred from one object to the other these are negatively charged moving negatively charged particles are the electrons can this negative charge be made to flow can electricity be made to flow like water flowing from higher level to lower level you have learned that a force will have to be applied to put a stationary object into motion we get ele current electricity when electrons in an electrical conductor are made to flow now let's learn something about current electricity a large current flows when lightning takes place from a cloud to the ground while sensation is felt by us due to a microscopically small current flowing to the brain we are aware of the current flowing through wires electric bulbs and equipments in the house in the electric cell for radio or in a car battery a current is produced by the flow of both positive and negatively charged particles the next one is electrostatic potential water or a liquid flows from a higher level to a lower level heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature similarly there is a tendency of the positive charge to flow from a point of higher electric potential to a point of lower electric potential this electric level deciding the direction of flow of electric charges is called electrostatic potential i repeat the electric poten electric level 
deciding the direction of flow of electric charges is called electrostatic potential. Potential difference Similar to the height of a waterfall, the temperature difference of hot and cold bodies, the difference between the potential of two points, that is potential difference, is interesting to us. Let's do an activity. Take connecting copper wire and connect to the circuit as shown in the figure. No current is seen to flow in the bulb. Now connect in the same circuit a 1.5 volt dry cell available in the market as shown in the figure. Now it will be realized from glowing of the bulb that the circuit is flowing in the, the that the current is flowing in the circuit. Electrons in the wire flow due to the potential difference between the two ends of the dry cell. These flow from the negative terminal of the cell to the positive terminal of the cell. Conventional current flows in the opposite direction and is shown in the figure by the sign of an arrow. We will learn about an electrical circuit later in the lesson. In this figure, there is no current as there is no potential difference in the absence of, an, of any cell. Current starts flowing in the circuit as soon as the potential difference is applied. The unit of potential difference in SI system is volt, denoted by the symbol V. We will learn about it in the next standard. Think about it. How can we measure water flow emerging from a pipe? We can find it from the amount of water that is in liters coming out in a specific time period. How then is the electric current measured? Electric current is measured by the amount of charges flowing in a wire for a specific period of time. We have seen that electric current is produced due to the, due to the flow of charged particles. Electrical charge flowing through a wire in one second can be called unit charge. The SI unit of electric current is coulomb per second or ampere. 1 ampere also denoted as 1A is equal to 1 coulomb per 1 second. Electric current is a scalar quantity. Now let's learn something about electric cell. A source is required to produce a uniform flow of charges in a circuit. Such a general device is an electric cell. Various types of electric cells are available today. These are used in a range of machines from wristwatches to submarines. Out of this, you must be aware of solar cells. Main functions of various electric cells is to maintain a constant di potential difference between its two terminals. The electric cell works on the electric charges to maintain a constant poten potential difference. Now let's learn something about dry cell. It looks something like this students. We all have seen this. The dry cells are used in radio sets, wall clocks, torches, etc. These are available in 3 4 sizes. Now, let's see the construction of a dry cell. This is the diagram of a dry cell. Take a lid dry cell and remove its outer coating. Inside, you will find a whitish metal layer. This is the zinc metal layer. This is the negative terminal of the cell. I hope you all can see the negative terminal on the screen. Now carefully break open this layer. There is another layer inside. An electrolyte is filled between these two layers. The electrolyte contains 
negatively charged and positively charged ions these are the carriers of electricity the electrolyte is a wet pulp of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride there is a graphite rod at the center of the cell the grayish rod which you all can see at the center that is the graphite rod this is the positive terminal of the cell a paste of manganese dioxide is filled outside the rod because of the chemical reaction of all these chemicals electrical charge is produced on the two terminals that is the graphite rod and the zinc layer and an electric circuit flows in the the electric current flows in the circuit due to the wet pulp used in the cell the chemical reaction proceeds very slowly hence a large electric current cannot be obtained from this let's see the usefulness of this cell compared to the electric cells using liquid the shelf life of dry cells is longer dry cells are more convenient to use as these can be held in any direction with respect to ground and can be used in mobile instruments that's it for stu uh, today students we shall learn about different cells in the next video thank you